standing at the entrance to the construction site for Indonesia's new capital city. Indonesia is moving its capital from Jakarta to Borneo. This 35 billion US dollars project started in 2022 and will held the first independent ceremony in this August 17th, 2024. Uh, public buildings, infrastructures that being developed by our Ministry of Public Works is really on the track and uh, we are very optimistic that on next year on the 17th of August 2024 we are going to have the independent ceremony on uh, in front of the, the new palace. Named Nusantara or IKN, Ibu Kota Nusantara, some Western outlets have been portraying this Indonesia's new capital as a frivolous decision by the government, almost like they just decided to switch capitals on a whim. At this point, we should explain, and you probably already guessed this, that the new capital project is controversial for a few reasons. But that's far from the truth. Jakarta, the current capital, is grappling with serious issues like overcrowding and sinking land. Nusantara isn't just a random idea. It's a strategic move to ensure Indonesia's governance remains stable and sustainable in the long run. It's about addressing real challenges, not just following a passing fancy. But before we delve deeper into the discussion, I need you to hit that subscribe button first so we can reach 50,000 subscribers this month. That would motivate me to improve my contents to become better and better every day. All right, let's continue unraveling the truth behind Indonesia's new capital Nusantara. Penerangan-penerangannya tuh cantik sih di sana juga. Tuh. Relocating a country's capital is not a new thing, with many nations having undergone this significant change in the past century. According to the National Development Planning Agency, more than 31 countries have relocated their capitals. Among these countries are Australia, Pakistan, Nigeria, Brazil, Turkey, Myanmar, Malaysia and many others, while over 35 countries worldwide still discuss about relocating their capitals. In the history of Indonesia, after gaining independence in 1945, the Netherlands, the former colonial power, initially refused to acknowledge Indonesian sovereignty. This led to uncertainties and security concerns in Jakarta, prompting President Sukarno to move the capital to Yogyakarta in January 1946. However, this move was short-lived and Jakarta was reinstated as the capital shortly afterward. The idea of relocating the capital resurfaced during President Sukarno's era, with Palankaraya in Borneo considered as a potential site. However, this plan was not realized, and Jakarta remained the capital. In the subsequent era under President Suharto, Jonggol in West Java was proposed as a new capital, but the plan also did not materialize. Under President Joko Widodo's administration, serious efforts have been made to relocate the capital outside of Java Island. On April 29, 2019, President Jokowi decided to pursue the relocation and tasked national development planners to finalize the study for the transfer of the capital. Law number three, year 2022, known as the National Capital City Law, approved by President Joko Widodo on February 15, 2022, will serve as the foundation for the development of the Nusantara capital city in East Borneo. This decision reflects the government's commitment to address issues such as overcrowding and environmental concerns in Jakarta, signaling a new chapter in Indonesia's history. <laughs> The Western media's portrayal of Indonesia's new capital, Nusantara, has been marred by misconceptions, particularly regarding environmental concerns and the potential destruction of forests. In Indonesia are voicing concerns over the impact that construction of the country's new capital city could have on the environment. However, these concerns are unfounded, as evidenced by the reassurances provided by the East Borneo governor. He reiterated that the new capital city would not damage the environment but rather prioritize environmental restoration efforts. They said that moving the capital from Jakarta to Borneo will destroy the rainforest there. 
So, let me explain. These are the images of trees in the new capital Nusantara, and these are the images of trees in the Borneo rainforest. Do you see differences? Indian tropis Kalimantan, Indonesia, ataupun Borneo rainforest, Kalimantan, Indonesia. President Jokowi refutes the notion that constructing the Nusantara capital city damages forests because it's built on natural forest land. Jokowi stated that the land utilized for the Nusantara capital city is, in fact, a production forest. The land designated for constructing the IKN was originally a production forest. Let's not mistake it for a natural forest. It's a production forest, said Jokowi during his speech at Jakarta Theater on September 18, 2022. Within the production forest, only one type of tree is cultivated, known as monoculture. Eucalyptus trees are the specific type planted, and they are harvested every six to seven years for paper and tissue production. Jokowi emphasizes that this fact should not cause concerns regarding the development of the new capital damaging forests. This is due to the forest area utilized for constructing the Nusantara capital city being a production forest rather than a natural one. The commitment to restore the atmosphere of the Indonesian capital city to its natural state by transforming the existing production forest into a lush, green environment resembling a natural forest is one of the key aspect. This restoration process underscores the government's dedication to preserving and enhancing Indonesia's rich natural heritage amid the urban development agenda. Currently, significant efforts are underway to facilitate the reforestation of the IKN area a nursery has been established, housing approximately 20 million tree seedlings, including endemic species native to East Borneo and other regions. Presiden Jokowi Dodo meninjau lokasi persemaian mentawir di Penaja Pasar Utara, Kalimantan Timur. Jokowi... This proactive approach demonstrates a conscientious effort to mitigate any potential environmental impact associated with the construction and development of the new capital. Persemaian mentawir ini adalah persemaian yang kita persiapan untuk menghijaukan ibu kota Nusantara plus sekitarnya. Local Governor Isran Noor's reassurances highlight the importance of protecting the environment in the IKN project. He stressed that trees are being planted before offices are built and people move to the new capital. This shows that the project values nature and sustainable development, with the principle of trees come before people guiding its approach. The construction plans for the IKN prioritize eco-friendly practices, like using tunnels to reduce disturbance to the forest. By using such solutions, the project aims to balance development with environmental preservation, ensuring minimal impact on nature while meeting the needs of a growing city. The governor shared insights into the construction progress, noting that only 15% involves actual building, while 85% focuses on forest restoration. This distribution reflects a deliberate effort to maintain ecological balance and protect natural resources. The focus on environmental sustainability demonstrates Indonesia's commitment to responsible governance and ecological care. By integrating environmental concerns into the capital relocation project, Indonesia aims to lead by example in sustainable urban development, inspiring similar initiatives worldwide. In conclusion, the misunderstandings spread by Western media about the environmental effects of Indonesia's new capital are countered by evidence and assurances from the government. The dedication to environmental restoration, reforestation, and sustainable practices highlights Indonesia's proactive stance in balancing urbanization with environmental protection, setting a standard for responsible governance and environmental stewardship in the modern era. President Joko Widodo shared several reasons for building the Nusantara Capital City, or IKN, during his speech in Balikpapan City on February 22, 2023. According to the President, the main reason for constructing IKN is to ensure fair distribution in terms of economy, population, and development. For now, almost everything is in Java, 58% economic GDP, and 56% of Indonesia's population is in Java. Java is very crowded, 
so we need development that is not just focused on Java, but is for all of Indonesia, said the president. Moving the capital to Borneo is intended to drive Indonesia's future economy. By establishing a new economic center in Borneo, the country aims to decentralize economic activities and promote balanced development across different regions. This decentralization strategy aims to reduce the burden on Jakarta's infrastructure and resources, while unlocking the economic potential of other parts of Indonesia. The relocation of the capital to Borneo is expected to spur economic growth and development by creating new opportunities for investment, innovation, and entrepreneurship, Indonesia aims to stimulate job creation, improve living standards, and foster prosperity for its citizens. The relocation also seeks to create a sustainable global city. This involves implementing environmentally friendly practices, such as green infrastructure, renewable energy sources, and efficient waste management systems. Establishing a sustainable city demonstrates Indonesia's dedication to preserving the environment and contributing positively to global efforts in combating climate change. Pemerintahan gitu, jadi lebih fokus, lebih apa ya? Lebih fokus untuk bekerja sih, lebih kayaknya enak. Relocating the capital to Borneo is seen as a symbolic representation of Indonesia's national identity. Google Earth, Anda bisa lihat ini posisinya dari Sabang sampai Merauke, Provinsi Kalimantan Timur ada di tengah-tengah. Di sini posisinya. Sehingga dengan posisinya di tengah-tengah ini diharapkan dapat mempermudah konektivitas dan juga pergerakan ekonomi sehingga dapat mengurangi kesenjangan antara wilayah Pulau Jawa dan luar Pulau Jawa. It signifies the country's commitment to inclusivity and unity among its diverse population spread across the vast archipelago. By moving the capital Indonesia aims to showcase its rich cultural heritage and celebrate the diversity that defines the nation. The president believes that the IKN project will be completed within 15 to 20 years and IKN will become the seat of government. Meanwhile, Jakarta, though no longer the capital, will still be improved and continue to be a hub for business, tourism and the economy. Overall, the decision to relocate Indonesia's capital to Borneo reflects the country's aspirations for a brighter future. By embodying its national identity, promoting sustainability, and driving economic growth, Indonesia seeks to create a more inclusive, resilient, and prosperous nation for generations to come.